You were number one. This is now number 100. You're back. I guess it's been about three years since you've been on the, the podcast. Share, share with us a little bit of what has happened with Nando in the past three years. Oh, man, it happened a lot of things. Like, yeah, uh, first thing, I would say thank you. Yeah, thanks you know, for jumping like, on. Number 100, baby. How yeah, do we say it's like three digits now, right? Wait, is there anything <laughs> to like celebrate? Like, uh, or not? Is there something in Portuguese we would say? like a, a birthday if you make you you're 100 years old I mean you you go through a lot and that's why i see the podcast i'm very happy for you and then all the the work you've been doing seems like you've been pushing through like what we're talking about the diversity and people you bring in i'm so happy to see i was the first one and until get the hundred it was i feel like when you invite me i was like man it was was so happy for me like i was like yes I definitely would do well, you that. Gotta, like, you got to stay true to, you know, your, yeah, your day no, ones. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. And then I, uh, since the hundred, so many things happened. We, we talk about side things, right? We talk about the, like the, the COVID and all the work we've been doing with like Sean, Five mm. Star Marine and then everything. And now Phuket change, the whole world change, the world change, the, 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 the the tourism in, in Phuket changed. Like before, was very diverse. Now we have like more people from Russia. Were, were you were you on? I can't remember. Would you have been on before COVID? Did we did we film this after COVID? After COVID, was it after COVID? After COVID, where we like uh, was it between COVID kind of thing. I right? get. I know. Okay, so it would have been. No, it would have been like that March April. Yeah. So pretty it, much like. The beginning of we've been work. I mean, yeah, we you, because yeah. like was like a, you ask a lot of work the the social work we've been doing around the island and ah, how yeah, all yeah, the yeah. families. Right. And so it was like sad is that moment, but now, right now, basically, I don't like I, they don't need me anymore. Yeah, you were here when and Sean was that was the beginning of the, the life big, bags. Yes, right? and then like and that time was like we talked about like how jujitsu and everything, the life bags, the life in Phuket, how I ended up here. But now, after all hundred programs, now I'm here. Now I have a second kid. Yes, second kid. So like the family grow. Like we we before we had the business, the Sutai Gym. Now we sold. Oh really? We sold. We sold to the. We have a new uh, investor from Russia mm. because uh, Vadim. He's a shout out my boss, my new boss. I have a different boss. And then, so and you guys, are you able in to? In November, last November. Oh, really? What, last, month, what month are we in? <laughs> I like that. And it's I, here. I, 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 I like lose. that. That's, that's when you know when you enjoy your life. You don't worry about the mumps. You no just idea. go. You just go. Yeah, no no idea. So now you guys, how, how does that, are you able so to So now explain? I still work. I still work on Sutai, helping the transition, accounting, still working, helping the accounting, the lawyers and everything. And and I work, I still, I'm, I'm the jujitsu coach there. And yeah. I still work for them and then. And then move forward on, and that's what will what will happen. So Amy's working as well. Now, what Amy's still working uh, in a school? She yep. always she worked in um, U UWC for I think ten years or more. Yep. And then she's uh, still a teacher there. And you guys will will you stay at the this? You're still living there at Sutai. You'll stay. No, in no, we we left since really we, we sold the gym, and then we moved straight away to a, a house with a ah, swim pool. Sure. As before, we lived there it was like. 10 trainers, 16 yeah, fighters, yeah, yeah. and then we like was chaotic. And then we said, you know what? It's now, it's low season. And then we we saw the gym and, and then she was expected the second babe. Yeah. And she said, she don't want to deal with the uh, gym and the new baby. She yeah. just, she just went where, to- Where did you move? St same area? Pasak. Pasak. Pasak one. Ah, okay, so not too far. Here. Not too far, no. Shit, man, time goes fly. Sometimes it's just yeah, too much is like, happening yeah, at once. it's like, yo, like, that's why I see. It's, for me, it was easy because uh, we see all the time, right? We see each yeah. other all the time and then the cross. But I see, like, the, 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 the evolution of the podcast since the first one and how many people came in and how awesome the, the podcast and how much work you put invest in it. Yeah, and it's... then, like, you, you being, like, you research about the people and you know the questions. You like you kind of like go pushing the questions. It's pretty interesting. It's very good. Yeah, it's 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 like I said with jujitsu, uh, like that similar approach where some days I don't want to do it, and I I just feel like um, you know you have to do it every week, not just for the YouTube algorithm gods, uh, YouTube al algorithm <laughs> gods, but for yourself too. Like you know you just you push through it. 
let, let's jump a little bit back and forth on that. Maybe coming from the jujitsu approach, and I'm sure. I mean, you have your black belt. Um, you, I think, no, you probably got that before this podcast. Mm -hmm, before. But some of those days, those training days, you're going through. Like, do, how do you push yourself? Like, I'm sure there's days where you're like, oh, I don't even want to coach today. You're tired you know, of like, training. You know, something like will be interesting, but it's like sometimes people think like it's to look easy. No, it's not look easy because like you're not good at it, but you have that thing. You're like, remember, why are you doing this? Like if I'm not making it look easy, how can I like I make someone like believe what I'm teaching, what I'm preaching? It's like a very, uh, it's like you make, everybody makes think it's look easy, but because you're good at it. Like to, to good at to keep pushing through. Doesn't matter. Sometimes I go teach a class, I have a fever, I have diarrhea, mm -hmm. I have like toothache and I don't want to be there. And then like my, sometimes I'm like, oh man, boy, I could be like in a beach club, you know? I could, oh, I have to go because people like want me, people pay me to go to my class because they want to learn from me. And this is a privilege when someone wants to learn something from you. It's the same thing when someone click in your podcast, they want to learn something what you you know, show all these interesting people. So you have that obligation yeah. as well. No, no obligation. A obligation become like, it's more like... Um, discipline? Discipline, yeah. You're like, uh, discipline is like one of the things. Sometimes you think you don't, but you do. Like deeper in you, you do. You need yeah, discipline. This, this too, it's, it's, it can be hard some weeks. And I oh. think a lot of YouTubers, um, I don't even, I don't Everybody. really consider myself a YouTuber. Because this is very easy to produce. This is like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. To be honest, like... Okay, you find the guest, you do some research, and then you just sit down. One, I was, uh, another day, I was talking to Hugo. You haven't been here, yep. your podcast, right? He said, hey, Hugo, where are you going? It's like, oh, I'm going to Hong Kong. I bring one boat from Hong Kong to Malaysia, and then I'm going to bring another six boat. But it's, it's like, thank you. You tell me you're going to bring a boat. What is the process to bring a boat from Japan to Malaysia? It's like, bro. Who are you? <laughs> Nobody asking this question to me because you have a plan, you have a weather, you have this, you have a like permit. You need to like, it, they explain, you have to like, for example, go to Japan and you need to show the inbound fly out because it's very like, how can you sort of like fly out when you're in the boat? I was like, ah, oh, that's not just, a lot of times you make it look easy, but it's not, it's not easy. If I'll do a podcast, man, we're going to be a failure. <laughs> no, it just, it takes, it takes time. And you, I think you, you have to kind of go into it blind and, and learn along the way. Do you think the process is better than, than the final line? Some people want to be uh, like a podcaster or a YouTuber, but they don't want, they want to have like a nice setup. Like how much thought you thought in every single picture here? How much you thought like in the lightning and then, and I it think comes. everything, I, one, every week, one little thing changes. You That's know what it. I mean? It's Very like, small. But it's a process, right? But some, t some people think just like the first podcast, and then when you start making millions, or like when you're super famous. But nobody, like some people forget about the processing together. Yeah, Same with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like you go for a process. Everybody want to be a black belt. Everybody. Sometimes you choose like... Uh, different martial arts you will make your progress faster but is is what you want or is the progress you get the white belt the blue belt purple belt brown belt and then black belt is the process what you're looking for some people like just have the black belt but they don't like the process process is painful uh, well you can just give a black belt to anyone and uh, then you can buy it you <laughs> can buy it like yeah. how many times you see on the internet like I see this guy, he sit in front of his students and say, guys, I've been trained for like 11 years. I think I'm going to promote myself for a black belt. There we go. Easy. But it's you, very you, easy. But technically you can't do that. No? You can't. Who is stopping you? You yeah. tell me. Yeah. If I like come here, you, you're like, hey, Nando, I am a I'm identified as a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but the skills will take you to be a black belt is different. The skills even to be a blue belt is different from a white belt. And the blue belt to the purple, the purple to brown. And every time you have a process, you have sometimes same, the white belt is just 
strength, power is like you're breaking, you're breaking that kind of thing where you have, you thought you know you have the strength and the blue belt you start understand to put pieces together. The purple belt, you're like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. I'm tired. Sometimes the purple belt, they come always late because, and then the brown belt, you're like, yo, now I need to get serious here. I need to start learning how to teach because next level I'm going to be a black belt. Yeah, I wonder, they, they should apply this to these Instagrammers and YouTubers that are, let's say, the motivational speakers or fake gurus or the ones that are going to tell you how to make a million dollars in, in five days. Because everyone else there, they're, I, I feel like uh, uh, using that as an ana analogy, those people there, they are probably 90% white belts talking like black belts. Hey, but like, do you, ha you forgot, like, you are humans, like, we are lazy as fuck. We you want we want a reward. There's sometimes depending how your creation. Sometimes like how you be you raise up by your, your parents. Like sometimes you you don't accept no. When sometimes I say no, it's like oh you start crying, rolling the floor. Oh okay okay I give to you. But sometimes how many times people say no to you? How many times? Did you 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 cry one day, you moan one day, but you're like fuck man, I just dust off. Let's let's go. It's like the mentality like. Uh, uh, you see everybody, everybody want to like the walk the faster way, right? But nobody like want to like pay the price. Yeah, you go through the, the process. Like again, Lazada, we, well, well, if people are wondering who we are, we're, we're doing a fruiting body. That's what we're doing. We're doing medicinal mushrooms um, on island, on the island of Phuket. Well, actually in all the Thailand, but it's the same thing. Lazada saying no to us on banning a listing for who knows why. And he, that's the no in the process and you just have to go, okay, I have to suck this up. How am I gonna deal with it? It's a nightmare, but it's kind of jumping off and, that and, point. And it, and it is a good sign. It's a good sign when, when you start, when you like, when you have say no and you keep pushing, it's a good sign you, you, you know, in a road to be successful. And oh, one thing I'll say about the, I watched another day in your, in your Instagram, you explained the name was super good Which makes one? sense yeah uh, the born in fruit podcast like why what is the name from the quality the product and all the research you do in your product yeah that's why we want to be the kleenex of the mushroom industry because this lets people know we're not cheating you yeah no but like before yeah. i thought just oh is it different mushrooms is it like you have a different like benefits for you and in this and that but like you went deeper you went like you want know, what for my people? I don't want to lie to them. And same thing you said is the way I want the podcast. I want the products. I want to sell it. And then yeah, that's a hundred percent. This didn't exist in Thailand. Again, this isn't plugging it in that sense. I wasn't before the podcast. I remember, I remember you said like, you, you like always like, Oh man, Thailand is like so hard. You get from China to America. Yeah. And then now he's here. It's, it wasn't easy, is it? Oof, it was the, a all the paperwork and everything. Yeah, yeah. Mushroom, they already, when people say, oh yeah, oh mushroom, they already think psychedelic mushroom. Mm. But if you go in the supermarket, how many like different variety of mushrooms we can cook? Uh, you go macro, there's so many mushrooms you can cook. But now this one's, yeah, there's the, the studies, you have mushrooms can do benefits for your body. Yeah, this is pure functional mushrooms. They can be medical grade, but I, I think I was talking to this guy, uh, Ryan. I'm working with him from Life and Bamboo. He was on the podcast. He said something very interesting, and I think PJ repeated it as well. He's in the background playing on his phone. Uh, he said, Ryan said something interesting along the lines. He said, you know, you have all these supplements out there. It could be whey protein, spirulina, vitamin C, vitamin B, millions of supplements. But mushrooms, they're very different because... You can believe them immediately because if you take magical mushrooms, psilocybin, yeah. you will go to another planet. You will see Oof. things. So that, that's what Ryan was saying. He's saying mushrooms as a supplement, if that mushroom can do that to you and literally change your, your chemical you know, structure in your mind to um, uh, trip and see in other dimensions, let's say, or whatever that is. And they use a lot for like drugs. Like, like I'll, t I'll talk about what Sean was talking about to me, but like these mushrooms and he's... There's, studies jordan's and, and like yeah well if they're that powerful imagine what these can do and to be honest they're it's only one percent of the whole world of the mushroom species are functional in that sense but before we we plug my product the whole time um we're gonna jump back to nando as well i want to dig a bit deeper also into nando's life and what he's been mm -hmm. doing 
for pretty much the past three years and what's changed. And we're we'll talk a little bit about um, how Phuket has changed because I think living here, you don't even realize it. And again, it changes a degree every day, just like this podcast studio. But at the end of it, when you come back three years later, or two years later, when you haven't been here, it's completely different. But before we talk about that, uh, I just want to give a special thanks out to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. Um, now, recent, well, let me tell you who they are. Five Star Marine is a VIP speedboat tour company on the island of Phuket. They're the only ones that allow you to choose your tour. So a lot of the companies out there, they will just tell you, yeah, today, we're going to go on this speedboat. We'll take you to Kopp. We'll take you to Pangna. They're following all their speedboat buddies, and it's going to be packed. Pictures are horrible. It's overcrowded. Not with Five Star Marine. You can dictate your own trip with them. Talk to the cabin captain. Sorry, I don't want to go there. Let's go check something else out. This is the best speedboat tour, not just in Phuket, but all of Thailand. And recently, I'll let Nando jump in on this one. They just have two top 10 two on the trip advisor. So what happened? Man, Sean, Sean with his hard work, two top 10, the best things to do in Thailand. Go on, check out. On TripAdvisor. On TripAdvisor. So when you type in like top 10 things to do in Thailand. That's it. He's, top, he's got two. You know, just one, two. So probably I have to check it out. Sorry, Sean, I should check it out. Probably at least. <laughs> it's new, it's new, just happened recently. It's probably like a, one of the, probably two tour packages. Yeah, there's like two, like uh, PP Island and then I think James Bourne Island, one of these. Well, I saw they're doing the bioluminescent tours. Oh, I need to go that one. Because Chris Parker, yes, he, I borrowed, need he borrowed that camera. So yes. that camera, is it's that he was using it on that for that episode. So Adam came by, they borrowed it, they filmed it. I think they're trying to push this bioluminescence tour, which I think you almost have to go out to rally, you know? Man, there's like, Sean have this like a uh, few guys, they expert on these caves. And you go inside the cave, do you see when like Chris go inside? Never seen before. And then I think is the time I never be on that on that tour. Like I've been many like five star marines, but this one is new for me. It's a night tour then, no? Sunset kind of like that's I guess where you when you see the most. Yeah, you can. I saw the bioluminescence one time at Rally Beach, but it was at the Tongsai Beach part. And you one night I was there, the moon had to be out, and I was just splashing it. Um, I might have eaten different mushrooms. <laughs> at that time <laughs> and you keep for half an hour <laughs> I, I i was like oh this is you know i'm just seeing things and then like, yeah, it's like, like uh, what, what when, the fuck is that when i saw chris parker went there and then he looked like avatar yeah i was like awesome i want to i want to go i want to go i said i want to go i want to go but now it's like rain seasons busy it's fully booked every time this this tour oh no this tour every tour Star Marine fully booked all the he's time. Gonna need a, a, he's gonna need a five star marine yacht soon. Oh yeah. yeah. Where's that we yacht? We should go, we should do one day. We should do a podcast, live podcast on a Yeah, I I've me and Sean were we've tried to do content. I'm mm -hmm. gonna go out and do some more sponsor stuff, but every time like we're both something's going yeah. on. Yeah. Probably I would say maybe over the next couple months mm -hmm. because both of us it's like yeah we'll do it we'll do it and then six months go by and it's high season and then we're both busy again <laughs> oh it's but, like going insane um, but we'll we'll leave links in the description it's on uh uh better to check them out on instagram at five star marine yeah you have all the yeah. all the information there uh how are we on time because this is where i get lost and i want to keep it we want to try to keep these under 30 minutes do you know how we are on time? Because we were, we're trying some new tweaks with the YouTube algorithm. We might film more episodes, mm -hmm. maybe do two a week, three a week, I don't know, and just keep them really quick. Uh, make it more digestible. I think mm -hmm. people's time is attention spans due to uh, uh, TikTok and Instagram is just uh, going yeah. down the drain. Everybody like run really fast right yeah. now those days, right? And then you see like all the reels now. The reels is like, you have like 10 minutes, 10 seconds, like you... You need to like. You have like two seconds to hook them. Yeah. yeah. How, how are we on time? How many minutes? 15, we're on? Okay, perfect. Got it. Okay, sorry about that, guys. We're still learning um, because we're trying to time it again to keep them a, a bit quicker. And I think that will be interesting for the audience so mm -hmm. they can digest more podcasts. And also, my plan is I, it will allow me to see the topics. Um, because uh, that I'm also interested in, but then uh, what other people are interested in, and then maybe I can make longer ones on that. Mm -hmm. um, so before that, uh, let's go back to our main point. Phuket has changed drastically, specifically, um, let's say like Bangtao Beach, Maya, Bangtao Beach. all that that's exploded up. What's, what's your thoughts on Phuket exploding and what do you see happening? 
I think like, like I saw I saw the worst the worst times in Phuket time COVID, and for me is like is is beautiful what happened right now because I see jobs, I see like people have food to eat now. People like doesn't matter what you do, you're a fishman or you you fix bike or you rent bike or you you work on these like uh, um, customer service like in the restaurants anything. So it's uh, price go really up like. Prices go up like house renting close to the beach is like become higher and higher because you know privileged to be to the beach. So you have to if you live here or then on the island, you better move back way. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, many many new new things change. Carping Diem, Maya Beach Club, and all the area on the Bangtao Beach is like grow so much. So many restaurants, new restaurants, good restaurants. And also, cannabis. They open the cannabis, or like the whole thing is like when mental. There's more before was like a, 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 a night bar, you like, and then you have a massage shop. It's now like it's like a massage shop, cannabis shop, a restaurant, and then a, a, a bar. Well, I think there's probably more cannabis shops than Seven oh, Elevens now. Yes. Right. Yes, and 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 keep open, and they keep closing as well. You see many close; they close down easy. So competitive. And price, price, the price. You, I like to go inside and look the price and see the difference, because for me it's like I never see so many cannabis. I I live in, in England for fifteen years. Only I see cannabis on TV when they do a big, big like hit on the house and then see all these things. But here you can go and you smell. It's like one thousand five hundred. It's like that was expensive because you think it's 1500 I can't take my family to a restaurant. But if you have money, if you appreciate, you pay, and then you have all these things, and you kind of be shop with lounge and restaurant. You have like um, Dr. Green and Bow Avenue. Have you been there's, there? No, I don't smoke really. No, Actually, but like, I, have, I don't. I haven't in years. But it, before, I, I, we didn't go for smoke, but the place is insane because you go in there, you can order food. They have snacks on thing. They have a, we play video game. We're watching like UFC. I was like, man, this you can spend all day here. Becomes like a, a boys club. Boys club, and you see all the every place you have a video game, and you stop, and the people nice on the shop, everybody nice. So I think if I if I got into the weed business, I would like be the first to like go old school, where like you can only page me. <laughs> and, like, and then I got guys around the island. You got to meet up in alleyways. Like, that would be like the experience. <laughs> Just in case anyone's still looking for that. You don't need to do that no, anymore. No, you yeah. don't need to no, do it. Like, we, don't have, we don't have a shop. We got a pager and we'll hit you back up on the, maybe we'll text you. I, ha- I have like, I have a friend, uh, Dr. Weed, open here around soon. And when he opened his shop, he invited me. Was packed, man. He have like so many people there buying and then uh, you go again and sell. Now he's just open. Now we have uh, regular customers. Mm. They come, sit, spend all day, and they like do the work there. It's like become like a, a coffee shop, right? And it's yeah, become it's, natural, become normal. Yeah, it becomes like a co work. There's space no, as well. there's no more these uh, kind of criminalization. Still, of course, there's still people look when they look around. They have to see one couple one time, uh, live in Hugo's, and then. There's one French couple, young couple, and there's two guys, they smoking, and the couple said, you smoking weed? And you drive motorbike? Oh, no. I was like, oh, my God. It's like, because it's still people program on their country, right, to say cannabis is bad for you. Mm. Cannabis will, of course, everything is bad for you. If you, you go in your house and every time you put the hand inside a bag of sugar and you su- throw in your mouth, d- would you do that? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you ask me now, cannabis legal, do I buy cannabis? I don't. I don't go and every day smoke and buy cannabis. But when you program to like say, okay, in, my, in England, I have all these criminals, bad criminal, gangsters sell cannabis. And now we have, and then you travel to Thailand and you like see shops. Oh, okay. Crazy. I was watching this thing in Portugal, all the drugs, complete legal. This guy, man, he's like one of the best, uh, make pots and plates. 
and the report was asking him, blah, what would you do? Like, oh no, crack, you can have, a, I don't know how much. And he just like, take the pipe out, put the crack and then do it like, a, and he smoked the crack. <laughs> what? And then it's like, what? But the, the, the news is really good, like, because explained the government and, and she went to this guy, um, allowed everything and decriminalized. And it works and it works. Sometimes people go use, there's sometimes you use drugs. Depends how your mood. If you use drugs and you're sad, that drug is going to be very bad for you. But if you use drugs and you're happy, that is different. It's like depend w- the way you use the drugs. Yeah, and it depends on your state of mind. It's state kind of, of mind. It's, it's kind of like... Uh, and you have people use like, uh, Portugal must be like, people think, oh my God, all, all the drugs, illegal, crack. Uh, I th- I was, if I'm not wrong, if you have the police come and they're like, what do you have? Oh, no, I have a two grams of cocaine. Oh, okay, you are allowed to have two grams of Two grams of cocaine, one gram of like crack or something. Mm. And then cannabis, like 25 grams. They do it. And they, anyone can just walk around with it. Walk around. It's like there's, there's no, they show before there's a place in Portugal where they have this, uh, Brazil, we have a big problem right now. K9 is a synthetic drug from cannabis. They spray with these like shits on them and they look like a fucking zombie. You're like, fu- you're fucked. And you have the K9, K2, and K4. The K2, where you like mix inside the cigarette, you smoke, you still get fucked. You're like, it's straight away you get addicted. K9, if you look at Brazil and- um, No, they have like the zombie zombie district now in Brazil. Cracolandia. Yeah, this Sao one. In Sao Paulo. Yeah. And it's a big pop. Portugal had the same problem. What is, what is that? Because like all the drug addicts go in that area and it's a perfect hub for drug dealers. And that place in the capital is like, and they have all these old hotels where the drug dealers stash their drugs and they sell. The cost them is there all day. So criminality go high, right? Because you need money to buy drugs. What do you do? They like you drive around this place. You drive. They scratch your window, and they snap anything they want. They sell the phone for whatever, like iPhone Pro. Oh man, can I get another one more hit for iPhone Pro X? Mm. Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, look fucking zombie K9 that's the new one and then uh, what, what is K9 is it's it's cannabis cannabis um cannabis with like uh, synthetic cannabis they they start in the prisons in Brazil because in Brazil you have all these like system where they they detect every fuck everything they make you like you go in they make you squat if you put anything inside your body they check everything but the K9 is like a paper and you can put inside the belt inside the clothes is a, a basing on detective. This time in Brazil and the COVID time, and then go off the like, and then you you go out the prison. You are addicted already. What do you do? You look for the K nine. You look the name. Is this a big epidemic? It's in, a big epidemic. Like you see it all over the news and oh, oh, like it's like not all over the news because it's not something new, and they don't know how to control. Mm. It's become like like really really bad every day. Every day like. But you don't see it too much in Thailand, I don't think. Because it's like, I, I think like Thailand before, like see when they legalized Kraton, first Kraton, right? I, and then cannabis. How, before you came to Thailand, how many times you have seen reggae bars and you know you're allowed to smoke and weed there? I, I you knew just you could buy it there, but they would always like sell you a joint and you'd have to go somewhere else. I said, but it was, was a coach is that, right? Yeah. And now... And it's become kind of normal. Like, and how many people buy um, like ties, maybe smoke cannabis? Yeah, I don't. Not know. just foreigners, but just like the Thai smoke cannabis. And now it's not legal anymore. Illegal anymore. Now you don't need to go to prison. Now yeah, you can make a business from it. You yeah, they're all selling it. You can have farms. You know how much like their revenue. Like, mm-hmm. just now they need to capitalize to whatever cannabis, medicinal cannabis, and. Like California, like. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it was a huge opportunity, not just for Thailand, but also specifically in Phuket. All these businesses were exploding as well. Were, were you guys able to sell it at the gym at any point, or you just I decided? Don't, I don't think is I don't think, like, gym is with, like, cannabis. The, like, for example. For example, the, like, mushrooms, yeah? Yeah. Pro- is, a some, is a supplement. Because when you're in the gym, you need a supplement. You need to make your body as 
like operate in a high level. Like cannabis may be like oil to massage. Because the, the fighters, the Muay Thai fighters, it can't be good for them smoking. It's going to mess up their, meaning it's going to affect their cardio, no? I have, I, 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 there we go. That's, that's one of the things. Like, and you see a lot of smokers right now because it's legal. Many people smoke them out now. They look for alternatives. Mm. You know, like the thing. So I, I want to perform in a high level. Should I smoke? No, you shouldn't. Mm. Should I drink? You shouldn't. You know, everything, if you want to, like, if you're an athlete, you know, should, like, should be smoking. Or, but if you can have things where, for example, mushrooms, for example, the cannabis oil to a little massage, like Reese or Mama Reese here, she have, like, man, yeah. she have this oil there, and you, like, you have, like, bruises in your skin, and you, like, dig in. It's, like, perfect for your body. It's, like, different benefits you can get. For the from, inflammation. From the inflammation. Yeah. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for, like... Because everybody realize chemical stuff is very brutal in your body, but natural stuff from the nature. We like, when we die, what will we become? We become a nature, right? We become like, the only thing we know becoming nature is the guys from the submarine. Like we're talking about the submarine. Well, I guess guys. they become fish food. Oh man, that was how I learned about it. They become like a jelly, the implosion. Eesh. Like, because what, before the implosion, like, the, 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 the thing would become, like, 100 degrees, and they, they become just, uh, everyone become mush. See, I have a theory. I don't think they were on that submarine. <laughs> oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. I Two think. billionaires. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you, you want to fake your death. That's how you do it. I mean, th because with, with that, I mean, there's so many, a lot of people in are, are around, there's some stories, like, the, these crypto people that would own exchanges there in, in Canada, they would fake their death and that you can go to India and change your face. And like they even, th that was the documentary. It followed them down that rabbit hole. I don't know. I'm always like a bit questionable. Two billionaires. I think they died. That guy looks, too, he looked, the, 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 the owner, he looked too cocked. He like, mm -hmm. why we need health safe, health safe to stop a progress. It's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the perfect way to, to hey, if I'm faking my death. Why Pablo Escobar didn't out. fake his death? Yeah, I guess he could have, right? But maybe, <laughs> who knows? I, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's good. Too. It's good. Like, we, the, the way, like, the, 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 the people think, you have all these, like, theories and aliens. But and then again, that was, the, that was the 70s with Pablo. The technology wasn't out there. Now, nowadays, you can literally, like, Go, there's places in India they can change. It's like the movie Face Off with Nicolas Cage. They can change your face, change all your teeth so you don't have your dental records, and change all your fingerprints. I think will will more people if that possible, people will do more because how many like powerful drug lords on around the world? Why they don't do that? I'm sure they do. They don't. They That's try to. They I'm working try. on. Once I sell enough of these, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> they 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 don't do it. I think it's. Do you think, uh, I was going to ask more uh, uh, um, before we wrap this up. We're doing pretty, see how quick it goes? <laughs> so fast. I want to ask more a question like related to when you're living with the, the Muay Thai fighters. They don't smoke weed really. One, is it because it affects their cardio or two is because of the cost? So, yeah. And the time when like we had the gym was kind of like illegal. Like if, if uh, we, yeah. we had the like. Many times, you if you get caught and you don't have like finance to like push yourself out of the jail, and then the Muay Thai fighters when they come is like you have the Peru team, like the all the guys from like South South America and Argentina, they have the they, they they know they hear they 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 don't hear to play around. Of course, they go they go party after the fight. You know they they have the girlfriends and everything, but like they don't play much with heavy drugs and those things. Some people had the problem, no, but not many of them. And plus, most of them like kids, you know, the kids. They and they come with the coach and the coach on the top as well. Because uh, federations like Peru Federation, Argentina, they they come with the responsibility, right? Yeah, they can't really. Play and then around. if they do, they never done in front of us. They're very respectful. Those like those fighters, they they're very respectful. Yeah, and a lot of the fighters that came here, there there was a. a um, a bunch from well the the was it Pau from Costa Rica Costa Rica um, and then you had a lot of like uh, South American South fighters America, coming coming as well. I, 
I don't know if people understood though. A lot of those fighters coming from those areas, like they're also coming from poverty. Oh yes, oh yes. Like, Most of the the guys is they they're shot. You know, like they 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 Peru and they they the 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 federation is sponsored them to be here, and then we help some like the the federation with like put the money down, and sometimes they like live in a bare minimum and just live in dreams and like live. like they're living similar like. As a Farang here, you might look at them and be like, oh, they're just another Farang fighting oh, no, no, no. Uh, in Patong. It's like, no, they're probably coming from a very similar place these as the guys, Thai fighters. These guys, they like they buy their own food, and if they go eat, they eat like seven, five bar, like food on that. Sometimes they they they, they live in the same house together, or, or they live in a gym, a small room. What's their goal coming here? Like what, or sorry, it's more, what is their road map? They can come here, they win a fight at Patong Stadium, they work their way to Lumpani. Like where are they trying to take their career in Muay Thai where there is some sort of financial freedom? It's very hard Muay Thai, right? It's very, very, very hard. It's like, for example, like that's why like when they hear, it's like, bro, you should invest more in it. Like start training Jiu Jitsu, but like they're so tired to like train Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. But like Muay Thai, like how many Muay Thai champs you know have money? Unless they're getting sponsorships, like or going overseas. Now, and now, now, one championship will look very good, you know. Like before, you have only like they fight the uh, M Extreme local Thai fights, local Muay Thai fights. They don't pay much, but now these guys now they have one championship and everything. They they pay they pay way much better than the, before the previous fights. Yeah. And then when you go Lumpini, it's like, okay, you is it prestigious? It's going your curriculum, but don't take you away. It's, yeah, it's not financial freedom at that at that point. Do you see a lot of them, even the Muay Thai fighters, transitioning and trying to get into MMA because they I think know? they should. I think they should. MMA is like where where people find it more interesting. Muay Thai fights is very hard to understand. No? Yeah, the point system is very subjective. Yeah, it and seems. Then, and, and then it's like right now it's really good right now it's like the mma is like have so many promotions and even the local promotions you can get good sponsors and you that's where you but muay thai they like for example in england i don't know in england but sometimes when i when i watch the muay thai in, in england they still have the elbow pads and uh, like the, the i think yeah. there's like a level right like amateur to professional. And here is only professional. There's like blood, there's violence. Even from a, a, the, like when the kids are six, seven years old, there's still, no one's wearing padding. And, and then they still here, they still put the, the ties against the forest. But when you go Bangkok, it's a different level. You know? But I think like uh, all the Muay Thai fight to get the skills, starting to invest in, 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 in Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, and they go move towards it. And but there's a lot of, I think, uh, foreigners or, or people that don't understand Muay Thai, there's a lot of misconceptions, especially when you look at it, the average Muay Thai a fighter's career or record. It could be 100 fights, let's say. But they don't understand that they might be fighting two, three times a week. Yeah. But there are unwritten rules like... You know, if we're doing five rounds and I know I'm down four, don't they do like a tap going into the final round just to say, uh, I've submitted kind of, but let's just get through this round? I'm not sure. I'm I not saw sure. John Wayne Parr posting something on this. I'm not sure about or, like Muay Thai. And like, but man, if you like have a, like one of the trainers in the gym, they have like 300 fights. Yeah. I just imagine the head, the how many kicks he got in his head and then, and then all his limbs and everything must be like it's their bodies i wonder when they're it's uh, brutal like, muay thai is brutal when they get jiu-jitsu there's no compared to muay thai when those guys turn 50 like are they just and like you have a trainer at the gym he's an older guy but yeah. he looks in great shape yeah this he's guy run looks, he's run marathons and, and everything yeah this guy i see him running around here if, if you're around this local area it's an older guy he looks he's got to be 50 yeah but he looks he's in great Brute shape head. And this guy, if you ever, if you ever, if you want to test your power in the clinch. Yes. And he's old, man. And he's, everybody says exactly the same. Do thing. you think he probably has one of the best clinches in, on the whole island? I don't know. Like just his neck strength. Oh. My God. For his age? For his age. Yeah, for sure. My he God. put another old, like an old, old, the person same his age. Who, oh, I saw he trained like all the guys trained with him. 
and he's just oh that's life oh, he's had he's laughed at me and like i was much stronger a few years ago training with him and he w he wouldn't even hold back and i would try to rick rank like just rip on his neck couldn't move it technique he just sits stand. there it's technique sometimes just tech no just the strength flow the technique yeah the technique is good but yeah it's like uh when we, when we live in the gym was like we have a 10 trainers and it was crazy it was crazy and we have like uh Mauricio from Costa Rica controls well. Yes, yes, this and is. Have a, like, a, but what's and then that's said That's what Amy said. I don't want this because we'll come back right now. The the teams and nobody come back yet because you know like travel to Thailand become really expensive. The companies will try and make you to pay. You pay now. You pay that all the time. COVID there was no flights and there's all the, the airplanes and that's like. To fly, you you know you know wrong to stay here right now and um, because everything's expensive though. Yeah, even the flights back to Canada, I think. Oh like no, 1, it's like fifteen hundred. Yeah, they used used to be able to get them for like half. You like and you you pay that and you're like, do I go to a first class? Or I'm gonna sit on the, like in the pilot's like lap? Yeah. For that price, it's like no, sir. You go here ne next to the bathroom. Yeah, it's it's getting crazy. Well, on that note, we're gonna wrap up another episode. Uh, I want everyone to. Just to oh if we're wondering why we're wearing these we thought it would be fun <laughs> episode 100 Absolutely. um we started at number one with jujitsu so we're hitting episode 100 with jujitsu um i don't know how old we'll be if we make it to episode 1000 but i'm, I'm sure nando will be back again much quicker than three years um and i'll we'll come back with like a mechanic leg or some shit shit well, let's, <laughs> let's hope not hopefully I'm, i don't like ai gonna be like ai fucking neuro uh, neuro link connect to me i know the ch techniques from youtube yeah we can just do the whole <laughs> podcast uh, telekinesis and then the, the words just automatically appear there you go yeah. um that wraps up another episode uh if nando i'm going to shoot it back to this camera here for you if you just want to let everyone know where they can find you on instagram or any way to get in touch with you um okay guys so like i'm a head coach of like uh grace bahapuket and we have a grace bahapuket on Instagram and we have on Facebook as well. And also Coach Nand on Instagram, I put Coach Nand there. My personal, I put like weird stuff, I, I don't follow no one. But Coach Nand, I put like the training, sometimes we run around, we have these guys, we have like Brawley, we have a Brawley team another day, we're gonna have a Felipe Pena here in Phuket as well. He fight tonight, Felipe Pena is fight tonight. And, but I think in September or October, we're gonna have him here in Phuket, so. Follow him on Instagram. We we'll see. We're gonna talk. I'm gonna ask you like stupid questions for these world champions and and all these things. Yeah, I thought there was another big uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. The guy that the big guy. What's his name? That uh, that uh, took on Gordon Ryan, not Felipe Penny. I know Felipe Penny did. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Josh Hinger's. Yeah. Hulk. No, not Hulk. Not Hulk. Ah. Anyways, we'll think of it later. Let us know in the comments if you know who I'm talking Andre about. Andre Galvão. Yeah. He's supposed to come, but he's too busy. Ah, okay. So like, was postponed for maybe next year. Okay. But Felipe Pena is, is raw experience. If you want to like come to a luxury uh, jiu-jitsu holiday, Muay Thai holiday, luxury um, raw experience, I'll bring all these high-level guys to, and Felipe Pena come to Grace Baja. He's a Grace Baja. So he'll be with you? He'll be with okay. us here, and but raw experience will bring the... Uh, Andre Galvão, no, Andre Galvão, Carson Grace Jr., and then mm -hmm. bring all these big names. Raw, to, raw experience. Raw experience. That's just the Instagram. The Instagram, raw experience, and you see all the all upper come. Okay. And then they offer everything from you come in, buy your ticket, you come here, you have a holiday, you have all the trips, see elephants, mm. see everything, snakes. All right. Well, we will tag them in this description as well. Um, so, um, yeah, if anyone wants to reach out to them, I think it's probably easy just by Instagram as well. Yeah. So Thai or yeah. Grace Baha? Oh, they, they can contact you there oh, as well. Yeah. I'm okay. all, all over that. <laughs> He's everywhere. I'm like all over. Awesome. Um, all right. That wraps up another episode. I'm wearing my Siamese dream. I was supposed to wear this today, but it's under it. So I'll can wear you it. Show, can you show? Looks awesome, man. It sounds I, funny. Uh, no, we'll see. You know what? We're going to save it for the next time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You well, can't okay. see it. Next episode, I'll but be wearing leave it. Leave the link. I want to buy one. Yeah. Oh, I like I'll put, it. We'll put uh, Siamese dreams uh, in, in the link below. This stuff is so comfy. Look, look, our, looks money. Like that one. When, when, when I saw you walking down the stairs, like, damn, is it Tyson Fury? You're like, <laughs> yeah, where's the belt? <laughs> 
<laughs> Definitely fat like him, but yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're out. Peace. Oh.